Welcome to this Spring Tutorial from In 28 Minutes. Before we look into the specific topic at hand, let's get an overview of what we are trying to do at In 28 Minutes to make learning Spring easy. We have a repository on Git, github.com slash In 28 Minutes, Spring In 28 Minutes. The link you would find below the video where we have all the code examples that we are going to discuss now. All those are present in the Git repository. So if you go to spring in 28 minutes, there are a lot of example Maven projects which would help you learn spring very easily. We start with simple examples and discuss things like JDBC, aspect oriented programming, MVC and all that kind of stuff. You should find examples in here. If you go further down, you should also see how you can install these examples which are used in this particular tutorial. So you can click this link, takes you to a video which shows how you can install all the code that you would need to be able to run all the examples that we would discuss now. Let's now get started with the specific topic of this particular video. In this video, we would discuss on the modular architecture of Spring. Spring is created as a number of independent components which are also called modules. We would start off with the basics. I mean, that's the container modules. We would be talking about Spring Core, Spring Context. These are basically the container modules which kind of give the fundamental things that Spring is supposed to provide. Dependency injection, that's inversion of control. Later, we would move on to other Spring modules and get an overview of what they do. Things like Spring Data, Spring AOP, Spring OXM and Spring Test. At the end of this particular video, we would look at application architecture, which would be a multi-layered web application. How do you design it using Spring Framework? What are the different options that you have in designing a multi-layered application with Spring? Let's get started. Now that we understand a little bit about what the Spring Framework does, let's get a bit of theory under our belt. What you're looking at on the screen is an overview of these different modules which are present in the Spring Framework. The crux or the main part of the Spring Framework is the core container. The two important parts of the core container is the bean factory and the application context. In our examples, we were using application context to launch up the Spring beans. We were launching an application context and all the beans were running within that particular context. Instead of using the application context, we could have used the bean factory as well. The bean factory is the main interface which provides handling of beans, the IOC features of Spring. Application context extends the bean factory and provides additional functionalities on top of it. For example, it provides really good integration with aspect oriented programming. It provides really good integration with message resources. In typical web applications, you would want internationalization and application context has it built out of the box. Application context also has specific events handling. For example, if I'm having a web application and I would want to know when I have finished processing a request, application context provides listeners which would help you to do that. And also, application context provides specific context for handling different things. For example, for web applications, there is something called a web application context. So how do you choose between a bean factory and an application context? The Spring Framework documentation actually says always prefer using application context over bean factory. There are minimal performance advantages that you would get by using a bean factory, but those are overridden or those are not so significant when compared to the additional features that the application context provides. The modules in the core container provide the base around which the Spring Framework is built. They provide the infrastructure for the rest of the Spring modules. So what are the other modules that the Spring Framework provides? Let's start with the data access or the integration modules. Spring provides a Spring JDBC framework that basically simplifies how you do JDBC. Let's say writing typical JDBC code takes about 1000 lines. Using Spring JDBC, you can do that in, let's say, around 100, 150 lines. So it provides a lot of convenience in doing JDBC. Spring does not have an ORM framework of its own. What it does have 
is excellent integration with very popular ORM frameworks like Hibernate and Tomplink. The Spring ORM module provides integration with Hibernate and Toplink and any ORM framework which implements the JPA, Java Persistence API. The Spring JMS module enables integration over queues. For example, MQ using a JMS. The Spring OXM module handles conversion from XML to objects. Most applications use XML to talk to external systems. And that would mean that the internal Java objects needs to be converted into XML. Spring OXM object XML mapping. Spring OXM framework provides those capabilities. It provides the capabilities to map an object to XML and an XML back to the object, which would help us in communicating easily with external applications. Let's now move on to the web modules that the Spring framework provides. The most important thing about the Spring framework is even though you have the choice to use Spring MVC as an MVC framework, it does provide excellent support for other MVC frameworks like struts, for example. It has really good integration with portlets. So it does provide a Spring MVC portlet, which helps you build portlet applications as well. Of late, Spring also has support for doing WebSocket. Now that we looked at data access modules, that is the integration modules and the web modules that Spring provides. AOP. Spring provides basic AOP, aspect oriented programming features, and excellent integration with popular AOP frameworks like AspectJ. The last important module of the Spring framework, definitely not the least, is the Spring test module. The Spring test module provides you with ability to be able to run unit tests without writing a lot of code. So the Spring test module provides the infrastructure so that we would be able to unit test our code very easy. If I can summarize the Spring modules, we have the core container, the integration modules, the web modules, and we have the test module. One of the primary reasons why Spring has become so famous is the architectural flexibility that Spring brings in. The fact that you are using Spring in one of the layers of a web application does not force you to use Spring in all the layers. Among the 10 plus modules that Spring is offering, we can choose to use any of them and use some other framework instead of the other modules. And that flexibility is what makes Spring very famous. Let's now consider a typical Java web application and see how the different modules of Spring Framework are used in it. The first assumption we make is that Spring Framework is used to wire in everything. So the Spring Framework connects the web layer with the business layer and the business layer with the data layer. So it's kind of the one which wires everything together. So it kind of is the glue which integrates everything. So it integrates the web layer with the business layer and the spring like and the data layer and the thing which is used in here is the spring core framework so that's the application context now we want to design the web layer how do we design the web layer the choices typical choices that we have are if we want to go with a java web mvc framework a java web mvc framework i can go with something like spring mvc or struts the other option is I might be exposing REST web services and I would be probably consuming them from an Angular application. If I'm using web services and using AngularJS as the UI, probably we can use something like uh, Spring MVC REST service features to build the web services. So we can either use Spring MVC, which is directly the uh, MVC framework of Spring. Spring also provides excellent integration with struts. So whether it's struts one, struts two, I mean, who wants to use struts one? So whether it's struts two, which is based on WebWorks uh, or other MVC frameworks, Spring has excellent integration with it. So with any of these things which are in the web layer, Spring would be able to integrate with them without a problem. And the other part of the web layer is the view. 
I mean, what technology do you use for the view? Whether you use JSPs or free markers or you use JSF or Velocity, Spring has really good integration with them. So whatever you use in the web layer, I think you can use Spring to wire together everything. And if you really want to make use of a Spring MVC framework also, go ahead and use it. But Spring doesn't restrict you to do that. You can either go for struts or you can expose web services from the web layer and uh, Spring would also provide Spring MVC REST services. Now, let's go to the business layer. The typical features which are probably interesting uh, from a business layer perspective would be transaction management. And probably things like logging every transaction or things like that, which would need AOP support. Spring has excellent integration with very popular AOP frameworks like AspectJ, which you can use to do transaction management in the business layer. Or Spring by itself provides a bit of basic AOP features. So if the basic AOP features are sufficient for you, you can just use the Spring AOP features directly. If you want really an advanced AOP framework, Spring provides excellent integration with AspectJ. Next, the data layer. The data layer, uh, probably if you want to go with a SQL based application, I mean, you don't want to use an ORM, but you want to write SQL based applications, then probably you can go with Spring JDBC, which is 10 times better than the normal JDBC frameworks uh, in terms of reducing the amount of code that you have to write to do the single query. Also, there is another SQL based query. I mean, it's a little different. I mean, some people call IBATIS an ORM, but actually it's not a ORM. It's kind of, a, kind of between a, using queries and between using an ORM. So it's kind of the next step uh, when we are doing queries. So you can go with IBATIS. Spring has good integration with IBATIS as well. Or you can go with the real JPA ORM. So uh, you can go with uh, object relational mapping framework like Hibernate. I mean, you can use JPA directly and use Hibernate as the implementation. JPA is Java Persistence API, which kind of defines how, uh, like, which kinds of is a specification for a ORM framework and Hibernate also implements the JPA. So you can use Spring to integrate with Hibernate. Spring has really good integration with JPA as well. So whichever framework you choose to use with the data layer, Spring has really good integration with it. And if you want to use a JMS or a web service to communicate with other systems, Spring also has very good uh, integration in there. So this is kind of a discussion to give you the scale of where all Spring Framework integration can be used and where all Spring Framework provides its own stuff. Hope you had a good time learning Spring in this particular tutorial. You will find more examples about dependency injection, inversion of control, Spring modules, JDBC, aspect-oriented programming, MVC, and a lot of that kind of examples on our Git repository, as well as links to a number of video tutorials. You'd find a list of more than 10 videos which you can look at to understand Spring even more on the GitHub repository. What's stopping you? Just go down there, look at all the examples and become an expert on Spring. And by the way, do not forget to subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.